Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Today I wanted to review a kit that I received from Tom Apolenic. I probably said your name wrong, Tom, I apologize, uh, at A to Z Tech. So Tom sent me this kit at no charge, and he didn't expect a review. It could be a giveaway, whatever, but I received the kit at no charge. This is a crowbar kit. So Tom sells these on his website, a-2-z.tech, and Tom lives in Kansas. We've had Tom on Coffee and Ham Radios before. Really knowledgeable guy, super nice guy. Highly recommend his gear. He did a great review on fuses, and you think fuses are kind of boring. Tom showed that not all fuses are created equal. Today I want to take a look at what Tom calls the mini bar full kit. And this is available on his website at A to Z Tech. So included in the kit, this is almost sort of kind of an unboxing, almost. I've had it open already. So we get the circuit board and Tom has these boards pre-made and filled in with all the surface mount components. And you can see the board here. There's a little bit of soldering we're going to have to do. And there are some surface mount components as well as an SCR, silicon controlled resistor here. And what this is, is a crowbar circuit. So a crowbar circuit, if you've never heard that term, is really exactly what it sounds like. If the voltage goes too high on a given power input, the crowbar falls across the circuit causes a dead short, removing power from whatever load is being powered by that circuit. In, in the higher end power supplies, like an Astron, for example, there's a resettable crowbar circuit in there. If the crowbar triggers at 16 volts, for example, in an Astron power supply, the output power drops to zero, and the only way to reset it is to turn the power supply back off and on again. Tom's kit uses a standard automotive style fuse, but we're going to put the kit together and take a look at it. And if I can find a fuse, we'll do some demos. So Tom's kit is designed to cut off at 15 volts DC. It has with it the actual fuse holder that goes mounts to the board. It has a cover for the top and bottom of this with a hole to allow our, our fuse to come out. The mounting hardware to connect the two plastic pieces of the, the case together. An automotive fuse holder. This is for those standard blade style fuses. And then some pre-configured uh, board mount power poles. And we'll talk about these right now. You'll see that the board is marked in and out, positive and negative. So when you put this kit together, this is the wrong way. This one goes on this side. So our positives line up like so. And I still, yeah, I got that right. So that's how this is going to go. The fuse holder mounts here. And this is keyed on the actual fuse holder to match the board. So you can't put this in the wrong way. That goes like that. And then we solder the whole thing together. Now Tom has the circuitry in here to detect the voltage uh, over 15 volts, as I said. And he also has circuitry in here to protect this against possibly um, tripping the fuse in case of a power spike. Tom rates this board at 15 amps of continuous duty. You can have up to a 30 amp fuse in there. The board can handle 30 amps, but based on Tom's instructions in the user guide, which is online on his website, if you're going to run above 15 amps, it needs to be about a 50% duty cycle. So that's it. It's a pretty simple thing. And the way this is designed, that's going to go on there like that. And then of course the bottom piece fastens on the bottom with the included hardware. And then this is designed to go in line between your input power supply and whatever load that you're running. So the uses for this, uh, there are several. If you have a power supply that does not have a built-in crowbar circuit, this can protect your several thousand dollar radio from your 5995 power supply. And I'm not judging. If that's what you roll with, that you do you. But this little gadget, which Tom sells for $40 on his site, can protect that multi-thousand dollar radio from that $60 power supply. Um, replacing an automotive fuse is a buck or so, as opposed to replacing your radio if that switching power supply that you got at a flea market three years ago in a garage 
from a guy named Buddy. So that's what this is designed for. Uh, you could also use it at something like field day. If you're sharing a power supply with somebody, you have no idea the provenance of their power supply. I would put this between my radio gear and somebody else's power supply if I did not know what kind of power supply that was or how good it was or, or how cheap it was. We've got it assembled and that is the finished product. Okay, so I've got our test rig set up here. I did find some automotive fuses. This is a three amp. We're not gonna try and pull a load and pop a fuse. What this is designed to do is to cut out at 15 volts. I misspoke earlier. This will not necessarily pop the fuse, but when the SCR goes above 15 volts, this will disconnect the electricity. The fuse is over current protection as well, because if the voltage goes up and you have a load, you're very likely going to pull too much current anyway. But for what we're going to do today, we just want, I want to demo the SCR cutting off. Our power supply is set to 13 and a half volts. Yes, I know they're both red wires. It's from a test rig earlier. So we have our voltage here. You see the green light that indicates our crowbar is operational. And so we're going to turn up the voltage to 14 and a half and everything is still working just great. You can see the meter. Now, as soon as I turn the uh, voltage up and it passes 15, the FCR should cut in and the circuit should cut off. And it did low voltage. My power supply went down to one volt at this point. <clears throat> and so if I reset this power supply to a lower voltage and turn it back on, you can see we have 13.4 volts again. And as I turn up the voltage on the power supply to 14.5, circuit's still working. You can see the green light. And as soon as we pass 15, boom, the SCR kicks in and the power goes out. And obviously, if we overcurrented because of too heavy of a load at that voltage, the fuse would blow as well. So this has got double protection, the SCR and the fuse. That's it. Guys, I know this is kind of a sketchy looking setup, but that seemed to be the best way to demonstrate what this thing is doing. And if I reset the power, once again, this will come right back. It's not destructive other than if you blow a fuse because of an overcurrent sitch. That's it for today. Guys, I hope you got something out of this. If you would, check out Tom's website, a to z.tech. And have a great day, 73.